have our four kinds of evidence, logical possibility, frequency, propensity, plausibility, and that's all well and good. Now, I, I want to be clear, these are not created equal. <laughs> these are different kinds of evidence that are appropriate for different sorts of situations. Frequency plausibility, or excuse me, frequency probability is really useful for such things as gambling. And well, I'll say, I'm not, not encouraging gambling, but <laughs> in terms of just finding out the sheer mathematical possibility in terms of what is available and your favorite outcome is right in there. Okay, cool. That's freak, that, that, that's a logical possibility, and that's really, really useful. But it, it's not going to be useful for other situations, right? I mean, uh, we'll just speak simply and stupidly uh, here in, in Texas, right? We got wh what's possible for the weather. Well, you got bright sunshine, you got partly cloudy, you got overcast, you have rain, heavy rain. Um, I don't know, depending on time of year, you might want to throw in freezing rain, sleet, and snow, right? So we got eight. Well, that doesn't mean that on any given day, there's a one in eight chance for sunshine. <laughs> There's not a 12.5% chance for sunshine at any given day in Texas. The chances are really, really high. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, frequency probability is more useful for this if you're going to consider maybe, you know, the rainfall over the course of the month in that given month. Okay, well, we'll look at, you know, so we're, you know, for funsies sake, right, we were in February. Uh, if we want to determine the chance of rain this month, in, te in San Antonio, right, we would look to frequency. We look how often we have rain during this time of year. If I want to look at the weather on a particular day, okay, I'd probably look at propensity. Well, what are the prevailing conditions? Well, the, you know, today, right, got bright, bright sunshine, humidity's low, pressure's high. Well, we're not going to have rain today. And I know that through propensity. I'm not looking at how often we have rain on, what's the day, February 4th? Something like that. I'm not going to look at how often we have rain on February 4th. I'm going to look at, well, what's happening today? What are the conditions right here or now? You know, plausibility is just not suited for this at all. Okay? I step outside, I feel like it's going to rain today. Well, no, that's not good enough. So these different kinds of evidence are suitable for different sorts of situations. Uh, propens you know, propen uh, trying to figure out what's going to happen today in terms of weather. Propensity is excellent. If we're going to figure out the odds of, I don't know, double sixes coming up when you roll the die, uh, logical possibility is excellent. If we're going to figure out uh, weather trends over the past 10 years and, and make a forecast on what's going to happen the next year, well, frequency probability is excellent for that. You know, plausibility usually gets the short end of the stick for a lot of folks, but uh, we, can't, uh, we can't leave aside plausibility either. Okay. Plausibility is going to inform, well, most of our claims to knowledge about, say, morality, knowledge, existence. Okay. It's going to be plausibility that's going to tell us what a material object is. Physical scientists don't do that. Physical scientists might investigate further and tell us what a material object is composed of. Okay, but the starting definition for what's even material to begin with, that starts with plausibility. The scientific method is not going to tell us whether the scientific method is a good form of inference. That is also plausibility. Right? We can't use frequency to determine whether the scientific method is a good one. Well, that's not going to, not logical possibility, right? Well, either it works or it doesn't. So is there 50 50 chance? Well, no, that's stupid, right? That's just dumb. So it's going to have to be plausibility that's going to inform actually our, our abstract notions for a lot of the time, right? So the different kinds of evidence, they're not all the same. And sometimes it's just downright inappropriate to use one kind of evidence for uh, an argument than another, right? That's gonna weaken the argument. If we use plausibility for everything, wow, we've weakened a lot. We have to use plausibility for some things, but I can't use plausibility to tell me what the weather's gonna be like or how the stock market's gonna, uh, 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 well, how, what the stock market's gonna do today. Uh, I can't use plausibility to tell me how, you know, what my chances for gambling, right? I'm sorry, no matter how good you feel about a dice roll, that's not going to determine what the dice roll is going to be. <laughs> That's not evidence for what the dice roll is going to be. It's going to be something else. Um, <laughs> so we're talking about the strength of the argument. It's not only 
available versus absent, not only complete versus incomplete, but whether you're using the right kind of evidence for that particular conclusion, for that topic.